Hey, Steph, Kareth Burke, NBC Sports Bay Area. Steve Kerr explained the thing that sparked Steph Curry tonight was Steph Curry, that you do this. And I was wondering, do you look at these preseason games as a, a tone setting opportunity? And are you setting some personal benchmarks for yourself early in the season? Uh, really, I just, uh, it's another game and an opportunity to get better. And, you know, being off for so long, um, I would say it's kind of a vibe of trying to prove anything to myself, but you kind of want to just find your rhythm as fast as possible and treat this like a, a regular season game as much as possible, even though, <clears throat> you know, we're missing, uh, you know, James and, um, and, and Draymond and our rotations are a little different than they're going to be. But personally, you can approach the game as if it's, you know, a regular season situation and, and try to find your rhythm um, since we've been off for so long. Are y'all sleepy? Y'all want to go to sleep? I, I want to go to sleep too. Steph, Steve has uh, labeled 34 minutes as, as the target this year. Are, are you going to try to push him at times to get every, over that 34? Every, every single game. Think you're going to succeed? Probably not every single game. How, how much, I mean, you know, how much do you think you'll you will need to try to nudge him up to, to 37 38 if it's a close game uh, this season i mean it's hard to say um obviously if we get it going my normal rotation is trying to play the whole first quarter and then see where the second quarter you know makes sense to come back in the third quarter the same hopefully i stay out of foul trouble so that i can play you know my normal normal stretches but i'm i'm not I've been through this. I know it's a long season and you can't be, you know, a superhero right away, but, um, you know, we'll try to understand what the situation is and respond accordingly, but be smart at the same time. Um, again, because, you know, we have been off for so long and, you know, you don't want a situation where anybody's put in a position uh, to fail in terms of kind of overexerting yourself. So, it's about being smart and having that conversation. Uh, I'm definitely going to, you know, be in his ear. And Mike Brown has that sheet that he's he loves um, to know who's coming in, who's coming out. Um, yeah, Raymond just showed it to me, so I know uh, I know what it is. <laughs> uh, hi, staff. Carlos Ramirez, NBC Bay Area, and Telemundo. Uh, we've seen an uptick on zone defense um, year after year, last year to this year. Do you think that's something that fits this team? Us playing, us playing zone defense? Yeah. I mean, it just gives you a different look. It's weird, you know, when, even when I first came in back in 09, like the first three or four years, you never really saw it. Um, and then when you started to see different <clears throat> combination of, of like size guys, um, you know, how much three point shooting there is now, the zone kind of came back as a way to just give it a different look. Um, Tonight, I think we played it a couple of times. Sacramento played it a lot. Um, for us defensively, it's just a, a change of speed, hopefully to keep the offense on their heels. Um, I don't think we'll play a majority of the time. We won't be playing zone, but it is nice to have it as a as a, a second option. Um, I mean, because honestly, not a lot of teams practice zone offense. So it's kind of <laughs> one of those things. Uh, and Steve said he didn't like the first half defense you guys showed. Is that something that just gets fixed by plugging Draymond in? I mean that I, that helps um, in terms of his you know his approach to that in the floor, him being vocal. But uh, we obviously everybody else has to do their job to make sure he's uh, in position to take us you know to a whole another level. So um, he is the glue. He is the quarterback. He's the uh, defensive coordinator. He's everything. So. Um, you know, we all have to be in sync and five guys on a string, and then uh, he makes us an, an, an amazing defense. Hey, Steph, you're entering your seventh season in the league under Kerr. I'm curious, what was your first impression of him, and, and how has your relationship grown through all the ups and downs, and how has he guided you guys, and, and you specifically, through everything? Um, I mean, we knew it was a... Uh, a pivotal point in our organization in terms of coming off three years with Mark Jackson and, and, and what he meant to, to my success and my confidence in the league. 
Um, and then that first year was was obviously an amazing journey, um, you know, winning a championship. But uh, he hasn't changed at all, even through the physical stuff that he's been through, um, you know, with him being in and out of, you know, his seat. <clears throat> um, he's always approached the the role of coaching this team with transparency and, and communication and, and managing people and understanding that uh, it does take, you know, one through 15 to, to do anything special. Um, and uh, he's been very consistent on that. So for me is, you know, you know, the PG and, and the extension of him on the court, I think we have a really good relationship, good chemistry, um, able to make adjustments on the fly and have those conversations. And uh, hopefully this year will be more of the same. What would you say is the biggest thing that you've learned from him? Um, I mean, I don't think I learned any in, in terms of what I'm about to say. I don't think I learned this, but it's more the perspective of appreciation of what we get to do for a living every single day. Um, we haven't lost that no matter how you know successful we've been. I mean, championships we won, I mean, we've lost. Uh, he always keeps the right perspective around you know, the NBA is a blessing and the ability to play basketball and be in our, in our world is, is an amazing experience. And um, that's refreshing to know, like we all have lives off the court as well. So he, he appreciates and values that and what we all bring in our own stories, but <clears throat> um, it makes you, you know, appreciate the opportunity to play the game and, and know that, uh, that your coach has kind of the same mindset. So if we haven't talked to you since, um, you know, James's first practice, yesterday what'd you think uh, of your first time on the court with him uh he has i've said it, everything i said before watching him uh you know in practice kind of remains true he's got an extremely high ceiling he, he made his presence felt you know in our short little hour uh, window of practice and uh just excited for him to get some reps and be in in that game like situation and atmosphere. So uh, his energy was crazy. It was like <clears throat> letting the, you know, a puppy out the cage. He was, he was all over the place, um, full of energy and full of uh, excitement to, to learn. He was asking questions, you know, the mistakes that he made were only because he was trying, you know, too hard. So that, that, that helps in terms of trying to bring him along pretty quickly. Steph, uh, Kent, Kent Bazemore has talked a little bit about how this past year was tough for him personally, um, but that coming to Golden State has helped him get back into a good mindset. Have you noticed that? And, and what, is, what has it been like having him back on the team? I mean, it means a lot of having familiarity with our organization and, and you know, just personally what, he, what he's about. Um, you know, he has been through a lot, you know, a lot of ups and downs, um, you know, changes the scenery, but he brings such a professional – approach and positive attitude to pretty much everything. And so uh, he's great in the locker room. He's great for the young guys to be around him. You know, he works um, and he takes, you know, his his uh, approach to the game seriously. So um, excited that he has an opportunity to really impact our team, you know, really be an anchor of that second unit and, and give us uh, an edge uh, on that front and some leadership, you know. Uh, he's made his presence felt, you know, really quickly. Def, do you see yourself using the uh, uh, jumper more uh, this year since they're trying to chase you off the three line and they're probably waiting for you at the rim? I saw tonight you got going with the mid-range jumper on your first shot. you think that's something you'll pull out more this year? I think the approach is to take what defense gives, gives me no matter what the situation is. I wouldn't, you know, being able to get to the basket, obviously a threat from the, from the you know behind the line. Um, you have to have all of that, but it, try to make the game as easy as possible. Um, you know, if they're playing aggressively and trying to take me off the line, and you know, sending help at the rim, that is a shot you got to be able to take and shoot with confidence. Um, but it's really not choreographed. It's just f make make things as simple and easy as possible, knowing, you know, you will see a lot of attention, a lot of bodies. And um, I don't think any of those, any of those are, are bad shots. You just got to be decisive. So you're not really like opposed to it, are you? Like you're not one of the people like three or layup, right? You, you'll well, take uh, it. I can get, I can get my Rip Hamilton on every once in a while. <laughs> Steph, Jeff, Jason Dumas, Cron 4. 
Uh, a lot has been made about your guys' depths this year, and you saw tonight uh, the bench got you guys back in the game. Nico, Damian, um, Kent all making plays. Do you think that can be an area of strength for you guys this year? I mean, it has to be. We have to have um, versatility to throw out a couple of different lineups and for our second unit to have an identity of how they're going to impact the game. So, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity there. You got JP's playing playing amazing. D Lee's coming off the bench, making his presence felt. Like you said, Kent Nigo is you know new on the on the job and has a chance to to make uh, make strides. We got the ultimate professional and, and Brad. So, um, you know, a lot of guys that are hungry to you know make impact and, and give us you know something off the bench and. And for that, again, that second unit to have an identity about how they, you know, go about their business. So uh, they're they're going to continue to get better as we go. Um, but it's nice to see guys playing with confidence. Last one for so what impressed you most about the uh, Warriors game so far in the pre the first two precision games? Uh, I think just the energy and excitement we're playing with, because I think we're all excited to be back. I mean, it's been a long time. So uh, I don't want to kind of overanalyze the game right now because we literally have had five group practices, I think, and in, in two games. So we're always going to have to kind of judge day by day how we're getting better. Um, you know, we haven't even dipped into like our fourth offensive play set yet, play call yet. So it's kind of just piecing it together. But the energy that we're playing with, the excitement, the commitment to uh, – you know, just compete. I think that's that's great to see, and guys are 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 uh, you know all bought in. So um, to start there and know we can always get better over the course of the season, um, that's the goal. And do you believe that uh, your team uh, is on the right way about uh, the tip off of the season? Yeah, we're excited. We got one more preseason game, and then uh, you know we'll get a cracking next next Tuesday or whatever it is. So. Um, I'm excited. Basketball is back. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.